The first U.S. death from the coronavirus happened much earlier than previously thought. Until now, the first known victim was reported to have died in Washington state on February 29th, but new testing reveals that someone actually died of the virus in California three weeks earlier on February 6th. Today, the reported national death toll is more than 45,000 people. Yeah, and Gail, the actual toll may be higher because many people are never able to get tested because of shortages of kits. And now we know healthcare workers and first responders will soon receive the first FDA authorized at home test. And we have FDA Commissioner Dr. Stephen Hahn joining us now to tell us more. Dr. Hahn, good morning. Uh, Americans are sitting at home right now and they're wondering two things. When can I get back to work and can I do it safely? This at-home test, tell us about it. Where does it fit into the bigger puzzle of testing, which seems so important to doing those two things, return to normalcy, returning to the economy, working as usual? Good morning, Anthony. Thank you for having me. So this new test is an at-home collection test for a diagnostic. That is a test that would diagnose the presence of the COVID-19 uh, virus. And this is a test where... Um, it's going to focus LabCorp, this company that's developed this, is going to focus first on frontline healthcare workers and first responders. Those with symptoms can go online and fill out a questionnaire. The questionnaire will be uh, reviewed by a healthcare professional, a licensed physician, and if appropriate and consistent with the CDC guidelines, a package will be sent overnight with a swab and a tube. It's very easy and safe to perform. Our data show that it's as accurate as having it performed in the doctor's office or in a clinic. They can perform the test, put it in the tube of saline, and overnight it back to the lab, and then get the results thereafter from LabCorp. Well, it sounds like good news, Dr. Hahn. Let's talk about how it fits into to the bigger picture. I was looking at the uh, testing data, and the U.S. has been stuck at below 200,000 tests per day. That is at least half as many. We'd need to double that pace, maybe even triple it, to reopen safely, according to some experts and their estimates. What are we doing to close that gap? Is the at-home test part of it? The at-home test is certainly part of it. And FDA has um, issued 59 emergency use authorizations for tests, four of which are the antibody tests, and the rest are the diagnostic tests. We have over 300 developers who are working with us to continue to expand that capacity. The other thing that it's really important to know, and this has been mentioned several times, and we've had calls with the governors about it, there is unlocked uh, capacity in the country. We're working very closely with the governors and the state public health officials uh, to make sure that the adequate supplies and the information about where those tests are available are made known to folks so that they can actually unlock that capacity. And we believe that based upon that information that we could double the number of tests that are done in a very short period of time. Can you tell us, Dr. Hahn, what a very short period of time is? Right now, every day counts. People want to get back to work. If we need to double the number of tests that we're doing, how soon can we do that? Can you give us a date? Sure. I mean, you've seen Dr. Burks and Dr. Fauci talk about this on the podium. Um, that could be done this week um, if the appropriate identification occurs at the state level um, and then the supplies are there for them. And so this is every day working with the states, unlocking that capacity, getting the supplies where they're needed, and actually informing the state public health officials about what alternative supplies are available. Um, and, and we've issued a number of uh, flexible policies to allow different swabs and different agents to be available, and we are disseminating that information very quickly to the states. Dr. Hahn, let's talk about something that Dr. Redfield at the CDC said yesterday to the Washington Post, that we could see a second wave of the coronavirus next winter. It could make this wave pale by comparison. Do you agree with his assessment? Are you worried about that second wave? I, I think that it's certainly a possibility, and the whole task force set of doctors um, is concerned about the second wave. And uh, Dr. Redfield's concern is that there also might be flu at the same time. Um, but that's why we have built into the plan the surveillance mechanisms to look for the respiratory illnesses and then to do the appropriate testing at that time. That's going to be a critical part of the reopening plan um, to allow us to move forward. And Dr. Hahn, just a simple yes or no, because I have to go here. The timetable for a vaccine, which would be really a game changer. Last we checked in with you, it was about a year off. That would be March of 2021. Is that still the case? Still the case that the estimate is March, but we're really trying to okay. accelerate the efforts, and we will try for sooner, sir. 
Dr. Han, a lot of people counting on you. We thank you for spending a few minutes with us today. Thank you very much.